Hi everyone, this is Steve Wright with SCD Lifestyle, and you're listening to the SCD Lifestyle Solution Podcast number 10. Okay, back again with me, my partner in crime, Jordan Reisner. How you doing, man? I'm doing, man. I'm here. I'm living. Life is good. All right, so uh, tonight me and Jordan are just going to rock the mic together. Um, We've been talking a lot lately, uh, you know, a lot of life events coming up. you got the first of the year coming up. You start reflecting back upon what's happened over the last year. And, uh, you know, we've had some pretty good conversations lately about SCD, about health, and about just what what's changed over the last year for us and really how far we've come um, since, you know, we started this diet and really what we used to be like back in the day. And so tonight what we wanted to talk about was kind of give you some more background on where we got our start and what the breakthroughs we see now at the other, at the other end of the tunnel. So um, to kick it off, I think we're going to start you know, way back in the day, and uh, Jordan's going to take us back and uh, kind of share together. We're going to share a couple stories about um, how our lives used to be. So uh, with that, Jordan, why don't you take it away, man? Thanks, Steve. Um, So, yeah, I mean, you know, one of the biggest things that we talk about, especially in our book, is you always have to remember how far you've come. And it's a full circle thing. And you never know how you're doing unless you really can look back and see how things have changed. So, you know, Steve and I make it a regular point to, to get together and just have a conversation about it. How far have you come? Where were you at a month ago? Where were you at a year ago? I remember two years ago when you did this. And we just kind of talk about it a little bit. And and uh, the other day, I, I just said, man, we got to record this for the next podcast. So here we are. And I want to talk a little bit about when I was sick a couple of years ago. And, and as you all know, I was on a gluten-free diet. And, and I never got better. So I was sick all the time. Horrible diarrhea, horrible stomach pain, constantly. And the beauty of it was was that I had it in my head that it was gluten contamination all the time. So picture me every day eating something different that's gluten-free with the utmost strictness, and all of a sudden I'm sick, and I'm thinking, what was it? What was it this time? Where did I get gluten? It must have been my wife cooking on my pans again, using my silverware. Something's going on. You know, i got to throw away all my Tupperware and buy new Tupperware. I mean, just paranoid, schizophrenic about this magic gluten evilness all around me. And it's a horrible, horrible thing to be sick all the time. And it doesn't matter if it's from celiac or UC. Any way you look at it, you're not in control. And I wasn't in control. And it was a horrible uh, sort of a black hole. And you don't realize until you get better how much it really sucks the life out of your mind and your mental energy. And it's all you think about all the time. And the story that that came to mind when I really think about some of my darkest days is I was a I was a maintenance supervisor at General Motors. And I was in charge of a pretty big crew of about 20 maintenance guys. And I was on afternoon shift. So I worked 3 p.m. to to 11 at night. And uh, we built cars every day. And I was responsible for the final assembly area. So when we had a breakdown, it was a big deal. There was a lot of people there, and it was pretty important. And it was not a good position for me to be in. Well, needless to say, I was sick a lot, and it was pretty embarrassing. But it all came down to this one night when I was really struggling. And a couple hours into the night, the shift was going okay, and I started getting that really bad sinking feeling in my gut, like, the hair on the back of my neck started to prickly up. You know, I knew. I knew that I had some diarrhea coming, and it was going to be some bad stuff. And I was just praying, just praying that the night would go okay. And, uh, you know, it was a regular thing, so it wasn't too big of a deal, but that particular night, things started to go bad. (laughs) We had these radio walkie-talkies that we communicated through constantly with everybody, and it was constantly blowing up with different problems everywhere, and Needless to say, about 6.30 at night, it hit me, and it hit me strong. I barely made it to the bathroom, and I got in there, and it was like edge-of-your-seat kind of diarrhea that that 
you could hardly maintain control of things. And I remember I was getting the cold sweats. I had to start taking layers of my clothes off. I had to take like my my fleece off, and then I had to take my my uh, button-up shirt off. And I was just sitting there in my undershirt, sweating, and my skin was crawling, and I was sick, you know, just sweat dripping off my brow, and and it was bad. And I just kept thinking, oh God, where did I get gluten this time? This is horrible. And then my radio started blowing up. Jordan, Jordan, we got a breakdown. We're down. Everything's down. We need you here now. Where are you? Where are you? So here I am. I'm trapped on the toilet. I have no control. And I'm trying to manage a breakdown through this walkie-talkie. And at the same time, not let on to the fact that I can hardly talk because I'm having such horrible gut-wrenching diarrhea. So there I am. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a mess, and I, I couldn't help but, like, zoom out of my body and look at myself and just laugh and think to myself, how the hell did I get here? What is going on? This this can't be how the rest of my life is going to go. And it all came to a pretty nice head when the uh, the upper management that was on shift was so mad that I wasn't at the breakdown that they called my boss at home, and my boss beeped in to my radio from home Jordan what are you doing what's going on and I said Jack man I am trapped in the stall in the bathroom and there's not much I can do about it man and eventually I got done I wrapped things up I threw the radio to one of the backup guys and I said I'm going home just take care of this and I remember the next day I came into work and Jack looked at me and he said what was going on last night and I said I don't know man I think it was gluten again and and he gave me that look like, you know what, I'm sick of hearing that excuse. And I gave him the look like, you know what, I'm sick of having to tell you that excuse. <laughs> and those are just another example of, of how sick I really was and how much it controlled every one of my thoughts. That's all I thought about. It's how I have to avoid being sick right now or what am I going to do if I get sick or how am I going to keep this job if I keep having to let my boss down like this? And those are the kind of thoughts that I sit down once a month and I think about. And I remember and I feel. And it's important to sit down and think about those things and feel those things again. To really know and feel blessed and feel excited about how I'm feeling right now. Because if I didn't do that, I might think today that, I had a bad day or I might think today that I don't know what I'm going to do but the reality is is that things are okay and I love to share that story and I know Steve's got some just like it but uh, I don't know Steve what what good stories do you have maybe about being at work or, or being out that were pretty embarrassing uh, from when you were sick yeah I think uh, for me it was a little bit different in that um, I can't really ever remember a day at work in which, you know, it was something as powerful as what you just shared, Jordan, where, you know, physically I was trapped in the bathroom or something like that. Um, more, most of my stories were actually, um, like, socially um, embarrassing. And I think one of the the most recent pain points and one of the ones that I think, I think you're, some of the most recent ones are always, you know, fresher in your memory, so they, they hurt a little bit more still. Um, you haven't had a chance to really, you know, reflect on it too many times and, and rewrite that memory too much. So um, going back to when I was in Chicago, uh, before I started the diet, um, I've mentioned it several times before, but I literally was just gassy all the time. Like, it, it's just who I have been until I started this diet forever, and... Um, normally it was a, you know, pretty foul smelling stuff. And, um, you know, I've just gone through life trying to figure out how to deal with that. And that, I mean, it's, it's pretty embarrassing and pretty time consuming the stuff I used to do, or, you know, I'd make laps around the office, just farting and stuff, because I knew that I couldn't stand in one place and fart because it would just be like this oil cloud of crap in the air and they, they would, everybody would know it would be me. And uh, I just lived in fear of people finding out it was me because back in back in college, you could just you know as a 
big sloppy guy, I guess, is what I was probably most of the time. But um, you could just fart and say, yeah, that's mine. You know, I claim that. And as long as you were, you know, man enough to to claim your foulness, um, everyone left you alone. But you move into the corporate world, and, you know, I was working at a, a big four consulting firm, you know, in, in a tie environment, suit tie environment. You know, that, that stuff's not acceptable. This is the big time. And uh, one day um, it was just horrible gas, and I, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't – no amount of sitting in the bathroom, no amount of, of trying to hold it in would just – it just wasn't going to happen. You know, I, I'd been there before, and I knew that the only way to get through this was just to push through it and try to, like, you know, squeak them out as, as much interval in between them as I could so people hopefully wouldn't smell them. And, uh, like – it, you know, this is the type of gas where it's just painful in your gut, and you don't want to hold it in, and it's it's almost like burning your butt, you know, because you just got to get it out. And um, yeah, I, I just tried my best, but you know, in that situation, like Jordan was saying, you know, when you get the shivers because you just have to let something out of your body, like there's no holding back. So I did, and you know, I could smell it, and I was sitting there in my little cube, just embarrassed as all heck, just hoping nobody smelled it. Well, uh. You know, people definitely did. I was in a cube farm, and, you know, uh, some of the managers were in the office that day, and they kind of, you know, like, you know, I heard some grumbling and mumbling as some people walked by, and I just tried to keep my head down and keep working. And, uh, you know, these cube walls are only three feet high, so it's it's not hard to spot where everything's coming from. And one of the most embarrassing moments I can remember um, happened later that day when um, a boss, a couple layers a couple levels above me called me into his office and he's like, uh, you know, Steve, uh, are you farting? Like, you know, I got some emails and, and like, he was like kind of laughing at me because it, it, it is almost funny, but I was mortified. Like he, he literally called me into his office, this guy who's a couple levels above me um, and asked me if I was the smelly guy in the office. And, he had gotten emails from plenty of coworkers all around me blaming it on me. And I had to tell him that, uh, yeah, yeah, that was me. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that was one of the most awkward moments and most embarrassing moments of my life. And uh, it, that, that still to this day just kind of sits there. Like, man, all of those people smelled me and couldn't work because of me. And, you know, I had to go into this high-level manager and have him talk about the fact that I smell. So, um, you know, to me, those, those are the things when I look back through my memory, there are more social aspects of, of how gas um, used to run my life and how how much my thoughts would be consumed of did does anybody else smell that? You know, I don't, I can't really smell today. So, you know, most of, you know, last six years, I really haven't been able to smell. So pff, this stuff was probably like atom bomb strength because when I smelled it, I knew that something was really bad. So, um, and I, I, mean, I have I, to interject and I can say this now because we both feel so good and we're happy and, and things are awesome. But Steve was, uh, when I lived with him, he was, the uh, stinky ass number one, so uh, I yes. definitely have to throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was my nickname, so <laughs> that was uh, forged in steel by many a uh, fraternity brother. So yes, yes. I think I, I think I beat out about a hundred guys for that. So uh, if that tells you anything, but um, yeah. So that that's that was probably one of the most freshest things in my mind. I mean that um. You know, going forward, just not just being free of that one little thing has been, <laughs> meant the world to me on SCD. Let alone anything else that you could ever ask me about. Just not having to think about crop dusting. To, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean that literally consumes like a lot of your time. If that's a problem for you, for me it was. You know, that's, that's, that's a like lot of laps around the office. Exactly. That's like ten <laughs> minutes an hour, man. I can't even work. So, well, that's um, powerful, man. That that was really cool. I mean, you can tell that there's a lot of emotion behind that, and you can tell that 
that you held a lot of shame about that and it's really cool that that you've got control of that now and that you own that and that's part of your history and that's part of something that you can look back on and feel and that now you can realize that that's not you anymore that's pretty cool yeah it's a good feeling so i i mean you know going off of that jordan i know we we talked a couple times about kind of you know you've had some recent events in your life that have been pretty amazing and uh what what have you noticed um because you know you just you just had a new born baby girl and uh you you were you were sharing some cool stuff with me so i, I just hope that you can uh, repeat it for everybody out there yeah yeah and for for those of you that don't know um i have a 2 year old son chase and uh we just had a newborn baby ripley um our first daughter she's she's 3 weeks old now um and it's pretty it's pretty wild to i was just talking to steve about the experiences I went through when, when we had Chase, um, you know, over two years ago when I was still really sick and I started the diet shortly after he was born, but um, when he was still really sick, or when I was still really sick, I'm sorry, um, it was a pretty unique experience to 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 have a baby and I, I wasn't really that present. I didn't really feel like I was that emotionally connected to the experience or even that emotionally connected to him after he was born. And that really hurts to talk about now. But I guess it, I feel better about it because I'm so emotionally connected to him now. But then I remember even when my wife was, was in labor, um, you know, I had to keep leaving uh, her side so I could run in the bathroom and have diarrhea that night. And then... I came back in and I'd just keep popping more Imodium ID just to try to make it through um, until everything was over. And so now, when we had Ripley, it was the most powerful, amazing, wonderful experience that I've ever been through. And it was the most present experience that I've ever had. Um, when, when we had the baby... I was so much in the moment and so wrapped up in the emotion of it and so happy and filled with joy that that's all that I could think about. It was emanating from my soul. And and I could zoom out a little bit and almost look at look at it, you know, above me and just soak up the moment. And I'll never forget that. And looking back at it, I, I'm so emotionally connected to her already. And it's been so much of a different experience. And the one thing that's different is that I was sick when we had Chase, and that's all that was consuming my mind all the time. Um, you know, when I'd be holding him or maybe falling asleep to take a nap with him, I was still thinking about how I was sick and how I didn't feel good, and and that never left my mind. And I never realized how, how much it consumed me until I was able to be so incredibly present with the birth of our daughter and just go through that experience and feel it instead of feeling sick I could feel joy and I could feel good and I could just go through it without thinking about anything else I didn't think about my stomach I didn't think about when the last time I went to the bathroom was I didn't think about the Imodium AD that's in my wallet or my coat pocket or my backpack or every other nook and cranny where I hit Imodium AD I didn't have to think about that stuff and I knew that what I ate was going to make me feel good and I knew that I wasn't going to have to worry about it and that was so freeing that I was able to feel some powerful emotions that I probably have never felt in my life before and the only reason that I was able to feel those was because SCD allowed me to take control of my life and it allowed me to take control of those symptoms and it allowed me to take control of my emotions again and I never, ever would have looked back at Chase's birth and realized that how much I missed and how much I didn't feel, how much, how numb I was. I never would have realized that without going through this experience feeling good. So it has been a very, very wide opening experience for me. And I've just tried to sit and think about it and digest it and understand it. And it really helps me realize what a gift this diet has been. And what a gift my health is for me right now. 
and to never forget that even when I have bad days because they happen but I can think about worse days and they don't happen anymore so that's pretty cool but I know that was pretty deep and pretty super profound and powerful but I know that Steve has also had similar experiences where feeling good again has allowed you to to sort of look back and think about how things are different so uh share some of those with us right now yeah i don't I don't think we should run away from your story just like that <laughs> but, but, but come on no, no, I think we need to keep the spotlight on you on you for a second uh, uh, I mean we hear from people a lot a lot of people out there you know have written to us, and we've talked to quite a few who they're not able to be as present as they as they wish with their family, and they aren't able to spend as much time with their kids as is what they want or with their loved one they can't um maybe go and do the things that they want to do and uh you know it it really does you know break break our hearts and and my heart goes out to everybody out there that's dealing with that kind of thing and and Jordan's story is just so powerful because um you know I've known him through all this and uh just the way he is now and uh, the kind of schedule that he's trying to keep right now versus what he kept, um, you know, two and a half years ago um, is just 180 degrees. They they couldn't be farther apart. And the only way that, you know, he can have two dogs, two kids and a wife and, you know, two jobs is by having good health and by, you know, putting good fuel in his body and taking care of himself and, and taking everything into his own hands. So, I mean, he's just a testament to me and everything. And so, um, I think that's just, just wanted to put that out there. But, um, I, I don't have any stories that top anywhere near what he just said. So, uh, what I think I'll just do is, um, you know, what I think we're talking about here is, we're talking about something that's kind of out there about how um, mentally you think about things. And when you're in the moment, it's really hard to to be present, to really think about what you're thinking about, to try to almost picture yourself um, like you zoomed out of the back of your head and you're looking at yourself in front of you and thinking, what is the self in front of me? Um, what is What are they thinking right now? What are they doing? What are they preoccupied with? And, uh, you know, learning to do that is, is something that's a really good skill. And um, what we're talking about is, is really that mental but also the emotional drain that those people that we used to be had in their lives. And that emotional pull that was caused by our thoughts as well as our physical problems um, I think was really – the number one thing that really plagued us, and I think that we're both as grateful for as anything, is that, you know, together now we don't suffer from the physical problems, and because of that, they don't manifest themselves into many of the mental thoughts that used to come about, and therefore we're just freer emotionally. And when you're freer emotionally, I think it, it just gives you vibrance and and energy and the ability to do a lot of things that you never would have contemplated because your energy was just being sucked down the hole, whether it be in the bathroom or worrying about um, the next the next fart that has to come out, whatever it may be. Uh, that's all wasted energy, which then I know when I was sick and, and when Jordan was sick, we would turn around and we'd turn that against ourselves and it would turn into a negative emotional um, state and an emotional energy back toward us because you get thinking about these things and and in the moment you're just like God, like why do I have to deal with this? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with this? And then it's just you know it's just like this horrible blame game that you get caught up and that's just all that negative emotional energy just robs so much from you and that that's like the number one thing I am thankful for and, and feel so blessed that. Um, you know, I found the specific carbohydrate diet and was able to to make it work for me. Is that just getting rid of that drain, like putting a plug in that and just saying goodbye to that? Um, that's that's a great point, Steve. And I think 
you know, to sort of bring this back around full circle, what we're doing right now is we're having a conversation that we have frequently and that we have as a regular routine of taking our health to the next level. And it's part of one of the chapters of our book. And if you want to learn more about it, you know, get a copy. But basically what we wrote about in the book is you have to have a compass. You have to see, am I going in the right direction? Um, and, and how do you gauge that? How do you know if you're going north? How do you know where the top of the mountain is? You know, how, how do you not get lost in the fog? Because day to day, it's up and down. It's tough. It's, it's emotionally and physically challenging. But we've sort of let you in tonight into an intimate conversation that we have to check in and say, how far have I come in the last week, in the last 30 days, in the last year, in the last two years? And you have to feel that. You have to feel that and you have to remember that and it has to be in the forefront of your mind to be able to use that compass and look and say, I have come so far, even in the last month or even in the last 60 days. I know right now in my life, I'm not getting any sleep and sleep has a huge, huge impact on your health. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's like a, a very large percentage impact on on how your overall health even in your digestion alone and if I wasn't rock solid everywhere else in my health right now my lack of sleep from having a newborn baby would crush me just like it crushed me when we had Chase I'm doing really well right now on very little sleep and I don't know that I'll be able to last very long but I'm doing great and so for me to be able to check in and think about that is really important because I might be having sort of a temporary setback from the lack of sleep, but the reality is, is I'm doing a heck of a lot better than I did two years ago when we had Chase and I didn't get any sleep. So the thing is, is pick someone in your life that you trust and that you can be open with, and they have to be familiar with your story and how sick you've been and what you've gone through in your life, and you have to be able to check in with that person once a week, once every couple of weeks, maybe once a month when you're on the diet for a while, and just have this conversation. Just be like, you know, I just want to tell you a story about about a couple months ago before I was on this diet, and I just want to share that with you, and I just want you to listen, and then maybe you can give me some feedback on, on something you've noticed about me that's changed. And you just have to do that. You just have to check in. You have to check in with your progress. You have to have your compass. And I think that, that Steve sort of touched on a lot of that tonight. And, you know, we've had some pretty cool stories shared, but the reality is is that we just do it to feel good. We just do it to realize how far we've come. We just do it to stay motivated and stay joyful and stay respectful and happy and and in control. So I guess those are my final thoughts. And I don't know if, Steve, if you want to kind of give a couple minutes, wrap up, on, on what your final thoughts are as well. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to to reiterate your point and bring it around a little bit farther. Um, you know, it, it does come down to to knowing, um, having a goal in mind, so something we talk about in the book, having a real, like, vision in your head of what you want to feel like and being able to feel it. And then... And then having a way to measure that. Having so if the, if that's like the mountain or that's like the end point, then you need to have that compass. And that compass, like Jordan talked about, um, can be another person. And and it's great if if you can have another person. But it also very well can just be you, and it can just be your journal. And doing these, you know, weekly reflections is something we kind of um, touched on in the book as well. Is is you know when you're when you're tracking your symptoms and you're tracking your journal, take a look at the last seven days and see what's changed in the longer time frame, and really reflect, like Jordan said, on um, <clears throat> writing down in vivid details how you are as you start the diet, how you are a month in the diet, how you are six months, a year, two years, because like I talked about, some of these memories fade over time, and if you can't recall back with vivid 
um, you know, sometimes painful, shameful detail how you used to be, knowing how good you have it now is really hard. And um, I think that's probably my main takeaway tonight to you as a listener is just um, don't be afraid to really make a log of where you're at and where you're going and please, if you can, reflect on that as much as possible and, and do it in painful detail and picture it in your mind because it's only going to help drive you forward, keep you on path, and get you closer to feeling good. And that's my final thoughts. Um, I really appreciate you guys listening to the podcast tonight. Uh, like Jordan had talked about, um, our goal tonight was kind of let you into our lives a little bit and share with you our stories and, and what we talk about on a regular basis in hopes that you can possibly relate to us and, um, you know, maybe find someone else to share your stories with as well. Uh, so we really appreciate you listening. Um, please don't forget to rate the podcast in iTunes store. And, uh, if you want to learn more about our book, you can always visit www.scdlifestylebook.com. And just want to thank you for listening to the SC Lifestyle Solution Podcast number 10.